I think most of us can agree that murder is one of the worst crimes that you can commit. This is why there are very serious punishments for murder, and why police forces and investigators put so much time into catching killers. Over the past few decades, forensic science has come on leaps and bounds, yet there are still thousands and thousands of unsolved murders around the world. In the animal world, murder is more common, but animals of the same species don't murder each other for the same reasons that humans murder each other. When a human murders another human, it's usually for financial gain, or in some cases it's because of jealousy or some kind of revenge. In the animal world, it's a very different story, as most animals only kill their own species to help them to survive. Even though animals aren't very good investigators on their own, in some rare cases they have helped to solve murder mysteries. In some stories, animals have eaten murderers or eaten evidence, and in some cases the animals are the murderers or are the evidence. In this video I will be going through just a few of these strange stories, as I will be going through three animals that have helped to solve murder mysteries. And for our first story we will be heading over to Sweden, as our first murder victim is Agneta Westlund. Agneta lived in the small village of Loftehammer in Sweden, and this was all until she went missing in September of 2008. The day she went missing, she walked her dog like she usually did, but unfortunately she never returned from this walk. After a while, her husband Ingemar became worried and set out to find his wife. After a short while of searching, he soon found her body, and it looked as though she had been severely battered. Ingemar quickly called the authorities and then led them to his wife's body. In most murder cases, authorities usually try to clear the victim's significant other first, and this is exactly what the Swedish police tried to do in this case. As Loftehammer is a relatively small and peaceful village, the police thought it would be ludicrous to suggest that a crazed killer was on the loose, and this was the reason they suspected Ingemar. They eventually arrested and charged Ingemar with murdering his wife, and of course he denied the charges and proclaimed his innocence. Ingemar spent 10 days in jail before eventually being released, as the police could find no real evidence or a motive as to why he would murder his wife. Even though Ingemar was cleared of murder, he soon became an outcast in his community, as no one wanted to associate with a possible murderer. It must be a horrible and life-changing experience to be accused of your wife's murder, but eventually, five months later, Ingemar would get some sort of redemption. When investigators took a closer look at the victim's body, they soon noticed some strange fur. As Agneta was on a dog walk before she was murdered, it was first assumed that this hair belonged to a dog. Further testing uncovered more fur and even saliva, and after genetic testing it was discovered that this fur and saliva came from a European elk or moose. These creatures are relatively common in this area of Sweden, and they are quite formidable creatures. They are of course the largest members of the deer family, and if startled, they can become deadly. Authorities believe that while walking her dog, Agneta Westland came upon an elk, and this elk was believed to be eating fermented apples. As I've covered in a recent video, moose can get drunk on these apples, and it was believed that the moose that attacked Agneta was drunk. It's thought that the dog may have also antagonised the elk, and this is what caused it to fatally injure Agneta. This eventually cleared her husband of all blame, but some may argue the damage was already done. At her funeral, most people believed that Ingemar had killed his wife, and he had been living in pain for many months. Either way, I'm sure that he's happy that this case has been put to rest, and even though the moose in this case wasn't really an investigator, the evidence it left behind did help solve the mystery. And for our next story, we will be heading over to Sydney, as our next murder mystery involves a man by the name of Jimmy Smith. For this murder mystery, we need to travel back to the 1930s, and most of this story takes place around Coogee Beach. In mid-April of 1935, a tiger shark was caught three kilometres off Coogee Beach. This shark was eventually transferred to Coogee Aquarium Baths, and it was put on public display. If you know a lot about large sharks, you'll know that they don't do very well in captivity, and even the sharks that do well in captivity need extreme levels of filtration and care to keep them alive. This is why you don't see great whites in captivity, and it's also why you don't see many tiger sharks in captivity either. A few aquariums have tried to keep great white sharks in the past, but usually they don't live long as they need the open ocean. The longest amount of time that a great white shark has been kept in captivity is around 198 days, and even though they are very interesting, interesting creatures, they can't survive in captivity. At first, this shark became a massive attraction, and it did very well for the aquarium. People would come from far and wide to see it, but really the shark wasn't having a good time. After a week, it soon became ill and started vomiting up random objects. At first came a rat and then a bird, and eventually it vomited up a human arm. 
Of course, the crowd was shocked by this, and they soon started to piece together what had happened. The left arm that was regurgitated had a prominent tattoo, and this tattoo was of two boxes. It was soon discovered that this arm wasn't bitten off, and in fact, this arm had been cut off. This meant that it couldn't have possibly been the shark, and someone had interfered before the shark ate the arm. Because the tattoo was intact and very much recognisable, they were soon able to identify the owner. It belonged to Jimmy Smith, who was a 45-year-old boxer that lived in the area. At first, the police seemed baffled, as Jimmy had no real enemies. People who knew him said he wasn't the sort of man who would end his life by suicide, and this meant that he possibly could have been murdered. Jimmy Smith had gone missing on the night of April 7th, and this was after playing a noisy game of cards at the Cecil Hotel. After playing cards at this hotel, they soon moved to a small cottage, and this is thought to be where Jimmy Smith was murdered. The reasons behind his murder are quite complicated, but it seems like Smith was involved in organised crime. It appeared that he had been blackmailing one of his former bosses, and his former boss had had enough and had him killed. John Patrick Brady was thought to be the man that killed Smith, but after being charged, he walked free without any jail time. Even though nobody did time for Jimmy Smith's murder, most people can agree that they had the right man, and the poor shark in Kugi Aquarium helped to solve a murder mystery. For a final story, we will be heading over to Seattle, as we will be focusing on the tragic story of Raquel Rivera and Jay Johnson. This story takes place back in the year of 1996, and at this time, the couple were both very young, being 20 and 22. On one fateful night, two young men kicked down their front door and started demanding cash, marijuana, and cocaine. Before they could say another word, they were soon set upon by the couple's loyal dog, who was a crossbreed between a pit bull and a lab. Unfortunately, the two men then shot the dog dead, and it died an honourable death trying to protect its owners. Unfortunately for this dog, it was unable to do so, and eventually the two men then shot the couple as well. After their murder and a long investigation, the police arrested two main suspects. They had some evidence on both of these men, but it's thought that they didn't have enough to convict them. This was until they managed to get hold of some of the suspects' clothing, and this clothing appeared to have blood on it. This blood wasn't from either of the human murder victims, but was in fact from their loyal dog. This evidence was enough to convict the killers, and in his opening arguments, prosecutor Tim Bradshaw stated, The irony will be that the witness who could never speak, even when he was alive, will present the most eloquent of evidence. So this loyal dog didn't only help its owners when he was alive, but he also helped catch the men that killed them after he died. If you know of any other stories that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below as I'm more than happy to make a part two. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.